Our planet Earth is a dynamic planet. That means it is not static, which means continuously there are changes either inside the planet or on the surface. On the surface, we know what and all happens. For example, we see rivers, volcano, earthquake, tsunami, rain and living organisms. But inside our planet, we should know what happens. Our Earth is like an onion. So in an onion, we know there are layers. If you take the outer layer, there will be another layer inside. And if you take that layer, there will be another layer inside. So like that, our Earth also contains layers. So the outermost layer, that is the skin of our planet, is called the crust. And this layer is the thinnest layer. That is of the other layers. We have three layers, main layers. So of these three main layers, the crust, the outermost crust, is the thinnest layer. And in continental masses, that is where continents or land is there, on these areas, the crust, that is from where we stand, or from the surface, beneath, it goes on an average of 35 kilometers. We say on an average, because at some places it will be 20 kilometers or so. In some places it can be more than 50 kilometers also, the thickness from the surface. And in ocean flows, that is from the ocean flow, that is water will be there on top, then ocean flow, ocean bed, and from that, the crust goes on an average of up to 5 kilometers. Then we have to know what is the main constituent of, of this crust. On the continental mass, the crust part contains mainly, because there are other minerals also, so mainly it contains silica and alumina. And Si from silica and Al from alumina, we say it as Cl. Silica is nothing but an oxide of silicon and alumina is an oxide of aluminium. And in the ocean crust, the main constituents are silica and magnesium. So that we call as sima. So sima, Si for silica and Na for magnesium. Beneath the crust, that is below the crust, we have the layer mantle. And from the crust part, either the ocean floor or the continental mass, the mantle goes to a depth under up to 2,900 kilometers. And after the mantle, beneath that, we have the core. That is the innermost part, the center part of our Earth. So that is the core. And from the mantle, it goes to a depth to the center up to 3,500 kilometers. And this part contains nickel and iron, and Na for nickel, and Fe, that is iron's name is ferrous, so we call it knife. And in this part, the temperature is the highest, and also the pressure is very high here. Let us know some facts about our Earth. The world's deepest mine is in South Africa. It's called Honeng Mine, which is around 4 kilometers deep, that is 4,000 meters deep. At the same time, engineers have dug around 6 kilometers deep for oil. And recently, there was a news that engineers in China, from PetroChina company, they have dug around 8,800 meters, that is around 9 kilometers, more than 8 kilometers they have dug. It's almost the height of Mount Everest. So that much deep they have gone inside. Then we saw three layers, the crust, mantle and core. Of these three layers, the crust, the outermost part, forms just 1% of our Earth's volume. And the mantle, which forms the major chunk, is around 84% of our Earth's volume. And the core, the innermost part, is 15%. And the radius of our Earth is 6,378 kilometers. That is to enter or to reach the center of our Earth inside, we have to dig more than 6,000 kilometers. Our Earth's crust is made up of different rocks. So any natural mass or thing, anything that contains minerals, which we'll see later, so any mass which contains minerals that makes our Earth's crust is called a rock. So already you must have seen rocks in many places around you. So these rocks will be of different color, size that is big or small, or texture that is it can be soft, rough, like that. And these rocks are of three major types. The first is igneous rocks. Next is sedimentary rocks. And the third is metamorphic rocks. We'll see about these rocks now. So when molten magma cools, magma is nothing but liquid rock. In high temperature, rocks will be in liquid form. So when this magma cools down, it becomes solid and forms rocks. Such rocks are called igneous rocks. They are also called as primary rocks because they are the main type of rocks and also they are the first type of rocks. After these type of rocks only, other types of rocks will be forming. That is also another reason. They are called as primary rocks. And the word igneous comes from ignis. In Latin, it means fire. So these igneous rocks are formed because of fire. That's why it gets this name. They are of two types. 
One is extrusive igneous rocks, another is intrusive igneous rocks. You must have seen about volcanoes in TV or any movies. So inside you can see the lava. The lava is nothing but molten magma, that is the liquid rock. So these lava will be coming from inside the earth to the earth's surface. So when they come out to the earth's surface, they will start to cool down immediately because the temperature outside will be cooler comparatively than the inside of the earth. So when they cool down, they will become solid and these type of rock that forms on the earth's crust, that is outside on the surface, they are called extrusive igneous rock. As the name suggests, extrusive, external, exterior, outside. So you can remember like that. So they will be very fine grained rocks, that is grainy grainy, small small particles finally made particles will be there. The best example is basalt. In our country, the Deccan Plateau is made of basalt rocks. And sometimes, this lava, instead of coming out onto the surface, they will be cooling down under the earth's surface, inside the earth's crust itself. Since the temperature will be pretty much high only, than the interior, it will be cooler, but so the cooling process will be slower. And because of this, the grains will be pretty bigger than the finely grained which we saw earlier. So these type of rocks are called intrusive igneous rocks. Intrusive internal interior, like that you can remember. So intrusive igneous rocks will be formed inside the earth's crust. Best example will be granite. So granite rocks are used for grinding spices, grains like that. When the rocks roll down, that is move and sometimes crack, that is uh, have some gaps or sometimes hit each other and break down into small pieces or fragments or small grains, they are called sediments. So these sediments, they will be moving from one place to another because of wind or water and they will be settling down in another place and get deposited over and over. That is for one particular time, some sediments will be settling down. Then after some particular time, some other layer of sediments will be settling on this. So these sediments all together, when they get compressed, that is pressed on and later after long time being hardened, becoming a solid, they form a layer of rocks. So these type of rocks are called sedimentary rocks. So the name comes from Latin word sedimentum, that means settle down, since they are formed because of settling down of sediments. So best example will be sandstone, which is formed because of grains of sand. And one more thing is these rocks sometimes will be containing fossils of plants, animals and also microorganisms. So these plants, animals or microorganisms, when they die, they will be on the sediments or rocks. So over a period of time, they will be decaying and get mingled or mixed with the rocks when the rocks are forming. And the next is when the igneous or sedimentary rocks because of high temperature and pressure change form that is from one form to another, they are called metamorphic rocks. So this word comes from Greek word metamorphose which means change of form. It is changing from one form to another. So best example will be clay which will be changing into slate. Slate is another rock. Then next example will be limestone changing into marble. So these are the examples of metamorphic rocks. There are many uses for rocks and as we have seen earlier, there are several types of rocks and some rocks are very hard and some will be comparatively softer. These hard rocks are used to make roads, then build houses and also buildings. And we might also have used in games, for example, seven stones, pithu or hopscotch. Tapu or Kit Kit and Five Stones, Gitti and you can also ask your parents or grandparents when they were kids, what and all they played using stones. And there are many monuments which were built using different types of stones. One example is our Red Fort which is made of red sandstone. Then a wonder in our country that is the Taj Mahal built using white marble and another in this picture is an example from the thousand year old Chola temple in Tanjavur or Tanjur. The Gopra has a 80 ton stone or rock. You can tell which type of rock is this in the comment section. And one more interesting thing you must know is these rocks formation, transformation is in a cyclic manner. That is, again and again, same things can happen. So earlier we saw how from magma, after it, it is getting cooled down, it forms after being solid igneous rocks. Then these igneous rocks will be breaking down, transported and will be deposited in a different place and form sedimentary rocks with heat and pressure. So here, these sedimentary rocks also can be broken down and form sediments and back into sedimentary rock. Igneous rocks into sediments into sedimentary rocks. Then igneous rocks can directly transform into metamorphic rocks and sedimentary rocks can be directly transformed into metamorphic rocks. And all these 
igneous rocks, sedimentary rocks and metamorphic rocks can be transformed into magma with high temperature and again this magma will be coming out and become igneous rocks. So you can see it's a cycle. This cycle is called rock cycle. And so far the rocks about which we are talking about are made of different minerals. Minerals are nothing but substances which occur naturally, that is which are formed naturally with certain physical properties and definite chemical composition. Why we are saying certain physical properties is there will be some commonalities. Certain minerals will be of some color or some luster, texture. So that's why we say certain physical properties, but they will be having only a single or definite chemical composition or with a definite chemical property it will be only one mineral. The next mineral will be of different chemical composition. That is why we say definite chemical composition. And minerals are of many uses to human beings. Some of them are used as fuels. Best example will be coal, then natural gas like methane, hydrocarbons, then petroleum that is petrol, diesel, kerosene and they are also used in industries. Example will be iron, aluminium, mostly they are used in automobile industries for making bike, cars and all. Then gold are used in telecommunication industry. Then uranium is used in power industry. Then also minerals are used in medicine like zinc, magnesium. They are also used in fertilizers for plants. And in each of your state there will be certain minerals which are found in abundance. So try to find what type of minerals are found in your state. Continue to register your comments. Thanks for watching and supporting my channel.